In 2010, I feel like a dinosaur, I started a company called Brooklyn Bullion. Culinary stock company intended to help extend the supply of responsible livestock and mixed vegetable farmers in the Hudson Valley and connect that product to demand in the city and across the state. The idea was to minimize waste at the agricultural level. At first, I thought it was a small project. I really did. I thought I was going to go to work and then go to a kitchen and simmer off some stocks and, and call it a day and keep doing this like this. But very quickly, demand exceeded my ability to supply. And at first, I thought that was an awesome challenge. And then I realized it was a terrible problem to have. At one point, Modern Farmer did an article, and the title was Farmers, This Lady Wants Her Bones. And at that point, a lot of different farmers came to me. And the system um, became very compli complicated. Um, and then, after maybe two years after this, the bone broth trend hit. And bones, the value of them, quadrupled. That's great for farmers, and that's terrible for business, because now all of these supplies where I was paying premium went up. And, and, and it, you know, I, I thought that the business helped solve a problem within the food system. But what we're seeing with a lot of investment right now is that big money is going to innovation that is helping misguided health trends. A lot of products are in the market that make these incredible claims that, you know, that it's going to heal holes in your gut and so on and so forth. Again, it's great for the suppliers of it, but it becomes very challenging for, for the, the product companies that are trying to scale. Supply is still in excess. The category has grown. And bones have returned to a reasonable price. A few years after I started the company, I halted production. It was a really difficult choice. And I did it because I wanted to focus on infrastructure and education. My business partner started working on an economic development project in Kingston that would help producers uh, have a facility um, to uh, do R&D and then to market test it in a retail space above. And then if it was scalable, it could go to the co-packer a mile away and then distribution would happen from there. This project is still pending. We got a million from the state. We matched it. We exceeded it. Um, when you're working with millions and millions of dollars, you might have one piece in play and then one piece drops out and, and to keep it all together and to actually lift it at that scale has been incredibly challenging. The other opportunity that came to me on the education side was I had an opportunity to write a book. And I was like, okay, I'll take a break. I'm not going to make stocks at night. I'm going to write a book. I'm happy to say that the book was just nominated for a James Beard. <laughs> Thank you. So demand continues to grow. The problem still exists. And the truth is, it's a product company. And I, in, in order to have conversations with these partnership opportunities, I do need working capital. I've received a lot of investment opportunities over the years, but none that have allowed me to scale without losing my stake in the business in a very short period of time. And without none that did not compromise the mission. And so I've said no time and time again. As a result of the nomination, there are a lot of opportunities. One in particular is the Wendell Berry Center in Kentucky. They said, why don't you pivot local, compromise local, and work within another system? And, and, and we're looking at what that might look like. Um, there's strong distribution channels online, brick and mortar. There's a mindful supply chain that has been streamlined because solutions have come about over the past few years where people are working together. And um, specialty distributors like Baldor have created a space for their excess um, from their USDA cut and pack um, where they're, they're taking um, vegetables and packing them and selling them in bulk. I mean, just these pieces that don't fit the models of what you might buy at Whole Foods, you know, when you're buying carrot sticks to eat as a snack. Um, and there are expansion opportunities that do include innovation that make a truly healthy product without enormous 
claims. The question that I'm asking is how do you scale without compromising your integrity?